all this city noise welcome to the city hello welcome back to my channel my name is abia and on this channel i share my van life journey while traveling in faith and before we get into part two of my van life safety i want to acknowledge that i see my channel is almost at four thousand subscribers so yay welcome you guys welcome to my journey welcome to my channel thank you so much for subscribing i appreciate it and i am so glad that you decided to follow me along this journey on my last video i talked about safety tips as a solo black female traveler on how to avoid racism and a sundown town on this video I am gonna be talking about my safety tips when it comes to crime, wildlife, and weather. And before I get into this, I do wanna say that I have been reading you guys' comments on the last video, and wow, you guys just, your comments just helps to bring awareness to things. And even though I may not have responded yet, I'm definitely working on it, as you can tell. I am in between orders right now, so I am kind of working. So, but I would, I definitely have been reading your comments. So if I have not responded, don't take it personal. I'm definitely working on it. But there was one comment that I read that I do want to comment on in this video. And someone had said something along the lines of, I sh should be worried more or I should, something along the lines of I should be worried more about black on black crime and I do want to respond to that comment and I want to say when it comes to my safety I don't rank any category higher than the other because at the end of the day any of those categories can bring harm to myself so I don't rank or worry about one more than the other I worry about them all e equally I just wanted to address that real quick. I just want to give you guys um, a little idea of what type of van lifer I am. And I do want to say that I am, <laughs> I made this up, a multi van lifer. I don't know, but I don't only just um, camp out in the woods. I do a lot of urban camping. Is that such thing camping in the city? No. I, I dwell in the city most of the times and I usually dwell mainly in the cities around summer months um, especially when it's really buggy outside because I don't like bugs and you're not gonna really catch me out in the woods when it's buggy so I usually go out to the woods or go to campgrounds in like um, the fall season winter and early spring other than that I am usually in cities so as far as when it comes to my safety i do have to apply different safety tips when it comes to whichever area i am in and my favorite type of camping out in the woods is primitive camping don't ask me why <laughs> but well i guess i kind of know why i like primitive camping one they're free usually and two they're usually less crowded so for me i have stayed at a few paid campgrounds in my in my past but the majority of the time i am looking for somewhere where i can camp out for free so let's get into crime and let's just be honest crime can happen to anyone anywhere it doesn't matter what color you are it can happen to you if you're living in a stationary home and it can also happen to you if you're a van lifer or traveling. So my objective is to be as proactive as possible to try to decrease my risk of becoming a victim of crime. Now, many of you know that St. Louis, Missouri is my home base and St. Louis is known to be a high crime state. So by me starting my van life journey, in st louis it's definitely has taught me how to van life in an urban area um to to avoid crime 
and I've been van lifing in St. Louis for two years now and I'm pretty much have it mapped down so I have locations that I go to regu regularly here and what I do is I pin them in my Apple Maps um, so I pin them by category so I have overnight spots and I also have chill spots listed. I don't normally share my St. Louis home base locations that I go to regularly for safety reasons. So it's pretty easy for me to navigate in St. Louis, but what happens when I'm in an unfamiliar city? And to be honest, when I get to an unfamiliar city, I do spend time driving around to familiarize myself with the area. And as I'm driving around, I am paying attention to everything. I'm paying attention to the people, the conditions of the houses or apartments. I'm paying attention to the cleanliness of the neighborhoods. I am paying attention to everything because I mean, let's just say, you know, I do have certain standards of places that I will stay at and I won't stay at, you know? And then as I'm driving around cities or anything, um, if I see a location that meets my standards um, where I would feel comfortable at, where I can stealth at, I'll pin that location in my Apple Maps and save it for later. So by the end of the day I may have several different places pinned in my phone in an unfamiliar city that is possible for me to stealth at. For example, <laughs> when I was in Maryland and I went to Baltimore, um, I drove around Baltimore for a while and I just, I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I just wasn't feeling it in Baltimore. Um, I wasn't sure and this is not even doing any research on Baltimore. I just wasn't feeling it. And so I went to an, a city on the outside of Baltimore and I found a place where I can stealth at. And when I, and when I say stealth, I'm hoping that you guys know what I mean. Basically what it is, is just sleeping in your van in an area, in a, in a residential or public area in a city or something like that where you're unnoticed. And I did the same thing when I was in Texas and when I was in Colorado. And also keep in mind that everyone's level of security is different. Like I am not afraid to urban camp versus I know some other people that would not urban camp at all. You know, I don't mind it <laughs> at all. I'm a city girl and i like the city to a certain you know to a certain degree and then once you get enough of all the city noise and then you've got you can go out to the woods i mean i like them both so i don't pick one or the other i mainly just pick one or the other due to my enemies the bugs <laughs> and if all else fails if i'm in an unfamiliar city and i can't find anywhere to stealth I will get on my GPS on my phone and I'll find a Loves nearby. And I actually had to do that when I was in Nebraska, I remember. I couldn't find anywhere to stealth at. It looked, um, it did kind of look like a small town, but it was more like a college town. Um, but I couldn't find anywhere to be comfortable to stealth at. So I just went on my phone, found a Loves and I was good to go. When I do find an area, I do look for areas when I'm looking, when I'm driving around in cities, I look for areas with manicured lawns, um, clean neighborhoods, and I look for spots that I can park that's not in front of someone's resident, um, someone's window, <laughs> um, or anything of that nature. And I also don't like to draw attention to myself um, when I am stealthing in a city, I will, I will only go to that location to park and rest. And that's it. When I'm going there, when I'm going to a location, it means 
I have already eaten. I've already had to do whatever I had to do outside of the van is already done. So by the time I get to a location, I normally will sit in my front, turn my engine off, sit in my front seat for a while, just to kind of observe the surroundings, just to making sure, you know, hey, anybody watching me or anything looks suspicious. So I'll sit and just observe for a little bit. Then I will put my shades up and I will hop in the back. Now I can get to um, back and forth from the front seat to the back without exiting my vehicle, which was very important to me for that reason. And if you've been watching my videos, you have heard me say that I don't normally plan, I just go, <laughs> which is probably not the safest thing, but I think for me, that defines my freedom and that creates more of an adventure for me. So I may say, you know what? I wanna go to Maryland and I'll just get up and go. I'll start heading that direction and see where the good Lord takes me. <laughs> so for me, I don't mind exploring neighborhoods. I don't mind exploring areas. I don't mind doing that. I don't know it's just it's me it, I think it takes too much out of me to plan <laughs> unless I'm going to go see like in, in a historical building or um, something or going to um, an amusement amusement park girl when you see me go to an amusement park I'm too old for that or like um, <laughs> you know an attraction scene or something like that normally I just go and I'm thinking about where am I gonna go next I don't know I gotta figure out what state I want to visit but I just get up and go I just drive I just go with the flow and for some reason it always works out for me and having a minivan allows me to do that because I know that I'm going to find somewhere to park and rest easily because my minivan blends in with all other vehicles and at night when all my shades are up you cannot see any light projecting outwards from my van now when i pick out you know go to campsites or wherever i go a family member a few of my family members always know where i am there's a thing on my phone where I can share my location. So I have family members that know where I am 24 seven. It's a tip. And then another thing that um, I do to help keep me safe while I'm out there, I never post on the social media my current location, never not on Facebook I don't have Instagram it's not on TikTok it's not on YouTube I never post my current location when you guys see a video of a place that I am at and I'm sharing it with you by the time you're by the time you get it I have already left that location and it could be days ago so I never post my current location on social media at all and no matter where I am and I I've been doing this for years so it's not really a van life thing but it does help it's just a city thing I have eyes all around me I am definitely aware of my surroundings I have eyes in the front of me the sides and the back I am paying attention to everything so when I'm stealthing in a city, I only arrive to where I'm gonna park and rest at night. But when I'm at a campground, I arrive to my campground in the daylight only, never at night. It is very hard and very difficult to see anything out in the woods. So it's kind of two different safety tips for both. <laughs> And when I'm at campgrounds, I always park my vehicle 
in a direction to get out easily where I don't have to back up where I just go forward and I can get out of my camp spot in case of an emergency. I also make sure that my gas tank is full before arriving to a campsite. In addition to safety, I have a motion sensor light on my door, on my vehicle, and that light is used when I'm out at campgrounds only. So if anything is walking near my vehicle, um, that light will motion that uh, will, t will, will, will sense that motion and turn on. And here is the light right here. That light will turn on um, if, well, okay, let me rephrase this. Because anyone can walk past your car in the city. Will it turn on? No, it won't. It does have an off and on switch, but I do turn it on when I am when I am at a campground, but it will not turn on um, unless it gets dark and someone has to walk past it. Someone or something. <laughs> okay, let me set you back right here. Now on my last video, I talked about the amount of research that I do when I find a campsite of interest to me. So if you have not had the opportunity to check that out, go ahead and check that out. But when I do find a campground of interest to me, I do extensive research on that campground. Well, what about wildlife? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just say that I spend most of my time urban stealthing, but when I am, so I don't normally have to worry about wildlife too much. I think it's always a good idea to know what type of wildlife will be in an area that you're gonna be camping at. I know like here in Missouri, we do have black bears, but the black bears are mainly in the Southwestern states. They're not usually where I camp at, but there is a possibility that it could happen one day, but not really likely versus someone camping out in the woods in Colorado or something of that nature where black bears are more common. You can always check your state's department of um, conservation website and their wildlife management website to see what type of animals is in an area that you may be camping at and also those websites will give you tips and suggestions on how to remain safe so what i've done is i've i've got you guys a link down below it is from Wiki, wikipedia but it does have um, wildlife management and the Department of uh, Conservation. One of those, one or both for each state listed in the comments below. So I did include that. If you wanna do your research, be more than happy. Now I know when I went to Colorado, um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be out in the woods or not. So I did buy some bear spray. I still have not opened the package because I never needed it. One of these days when I get some time, I am going to figure out um, how to use my bear spray. So until then, I'm just gonna leave it in the pack, but it's good to have. You know, whoo, child. See what I'm saying? I don't like bugs. So <laughs> I don't know how I'm living this life. How am I living this life? <laughs> Now I keep in mind that when we, when I am out in the woods camping, I am the foreigner. <laughs> I am the foreigner in their world. So I try to be very respectful. And there are some things that I do to, to try not to draw, a, draw their attention to me. One, I'm not a trashy person, <laughs> okay? I take my trash out. I don't keep food around, I mean, open food, you know, um, and I definitely don't feed any animals at all. That's a no-no. And keeping up with your, your food waste is very, very important 
because not only do you not want to attract a coyote, a fox, or whatever the case may be, you also don't want to attract rodents, okay? Because they're out there too, and they can get in your vehicle. And that would be a nightmare on Mini Van Street if a mouse was in my van at night and I had to sleep. Oh, uh uh. I would definitely be calling 911. Your job is to protect and serve. Well, I need some protection. And y'all think I'm playing. I'm dead serious. So, what I do to decrease or deter mice or rodents or anything from coming inside of my vehicle one i keep it clean two i don't keep food smells in my van um another one everything is in either in a in their container or an airtight container or something of that source um and another thing that i do is i keep mothballs um around my vehicle in certain little hidden spots I don't know if I got any up here, do I? Maybe not. Um, maybe they're in my glove box. But I keep mothballs and um, I have peppermint essential oil that I kind of tap a little bit around uh, my van. It's not overpowering, but so far I have not had any mice. Let's keep it, keep it that way. Keep it that way, okay? There are also other things that you can do to keep mice away. So I've included a link in the description box for you guys that lists 13 different scents that can help keep mice away. And keep in mind, nine times out of 10, wildlife is not gonna bother you. <laughs> They're probably more afraid of you than you are afraid of it. As long as you don't bother them, nine times out of 10, they're not gonna bother you. I have came across um, coyotes. Can you guys believe that I am outside my van, standing, going to the visitor center with the coyote over there? Coyotes, <laughs> I've came across wild boars. Remember that? I came across wild boars. I have came across elks. I've, I've even seen a mountain lion. Um, of course, we see deers everywhere. Um, what else have I seen out here? I just, I've seen all sorts of things and I admire their, their beauty at a distance, of course, you know, but I'm not trying to be their friend or, or thinking they're friendly because, come on, they're not. You know, I've seen even black bears. Where was I at? I was in the Smoky Mountains, yeah. Was it the Smoky Mountains? That's the one in Tennessee, right? I believe it was the Smoky. I think Rocky is the other one. Yeah, I think it's Smoky Mountains. But I've seen them. I've seen several different wildlife, and um, they don't bother you as long as you don't bother them. That's my intake. You know, I'm not trying to be your friend. So you stay over there, boo boo, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna be right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do about the weather? <laughs> You guys, Mother Nature is very, very unpredictable. Even a meteorologist sometimes get it wrong. <laughs> and lately, we have been seeing natural disasters like never before. Wildfires, flooding, tornadoes, hailstorms, hurricanes. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of unpredictable, some of those are predictable. The weatherman usually gives warnings in certain areas about something that's to come. Um, but there are some times where you don't really have a warning. Like the July, I think it was July 20th something of this year, when it was just predicted to have heavy rain in St. Louis, when actually we had flash flooding all across Missouri, St. Louis really, and a lot of people lost their vehicles, lost their homes. I mean, some things we just can't predict. Um, and and my, my word of advice on that is always just stay aware and up to your, you know, what's going on in the area that you're in. 
um, I try to be as proactive as possible. Um, I remember when I was in uh, Texas and I really wasn't paying attention to anything. And it just, in the sky, it just looked like that part over there was, you know, just a different color, you know? And then I decided to look on my phone and actually, I would say, was it 11 or 15 miles in a different city that some other way, a direction that I was in, they were dealing with wildfires over there. Now I know Texas is having some wildfires and there's one right over there. I don't know, Hood County or something like that. Look at all that smoke just lingering. Wow. Well, it's supposed to rain tomorrow morning. So we'll see what that does to the fire. But I'm safe and it's not by me. There's no warnings where I am at. And I was like, oh my goodness, I had no clue. So here I am, <laughs> not too far from a wildfire in Texas. And so at the place I was at, um, security drove by regularly. So I had stopped him and asked him, you know, is it safe for us to be out here? Cause I wasn't the only one there. Um, is it safe for us to be out here? He's, and you know, he assured us that we were okay. If, you know, they pretty much got it contained, but if they did not, that we would definitely have been notified to leave the area. So we just gotta be mindful and aware that natural disasters can be very unpredictable. And if the weatherman is telling you that this area is a certain area that you're in, there's a high or 85% chance of a tornado or severe thunderstorms or anything like that. If you do have the luxury to um, move locations to a safer location or rent you a hotel room or do something just to be safe. Um, as you know, all we can do is really be proactive with mother nature because I think she's pissed at us humans. We get our tail whooped. She's pissed because we're messing up her earth and she don't like that. So, hey, that's my intake. Okay, so. <laughs> now, the most common question that I get when it comes to van life safety, and it comes from my friends, my family, and some of my subscribers is, I know you got a gun, girl. And to answer that question, I would just say, I have several ways of protecting myself. Anywhere in my van, even from outside of my van and inside of my van, I can protect and defend myself at all times. Now, when it comes to guns, I believe being a gun owner, owner comes great responsibility. And each state has their own gun laws. So, you know, I'm not gonna tell anyone not to carry a gun or to carry a weapon like that. I will say that if you decide that is what, what makes you feel safe, and if you are traveling from state to state, please be sure that everything's legal. And also be sure that you are following each state's gun laws. And I was raised to believe <laughs> that if you're gonna pull a gun out on someone, you better freaking use it. So my thing is, if you are a gun owner, please be sure that you use it confidently because if you're hesitant, if you pull that thing out and you're hesitant, that person you're pulling it out on could easily take that gun from you and use it on you. So I'm just saying, being a gun owner takes huge responsibility. So I'm not gonna say um, have one or don't have one. Your level of security is your business and so is mine. And there are other things that you can purchase 
for protection, such as pepper spray, mace, machete, axe. Oh, and another thing that uh, some, some people don't talk about is like BB guns. BB guns, I don't know, what do you think? You got pocket knives, um, you know, you, there's all other, all sorts of other ways, bats, um, big heavy duty flashlights. I mean, there are also so many things that you can use to, to defend yourself. And regardless in my van, if I'm in the front seat or in the back, I have something at hand's reach that I can use if someone decided to break in my vehicle. Also, before I forget, it just dawned on me that another safety thing that I do is when I'm in the back, I put my keys in the same location because I don't wanna have to be rambling. If I have to get out, get out of a situation, I don't wanna have to be rambling to find my keys. I ensure that my keys are in the same location every night. When I'm outside of my van, my keys are in the same location, which is normally hooked up to my buck, uh, my, my belt buckle. You know, I've seen other YouTubers uh, hook up security cameras and all of these things. So, I mean, to be safe out there, I would say there are so many different options that you can do to be safe. Do what makes you feel comfortable. And like I said in my last video, my proactive tips have kept me safe during my van life journey so far. So guys, if you have any additional comments or safety tips that you would like to share within, within this community, please leave a comment down below because I don't know it all. I just share with what I do. So in my next video, it's gonna be exciting guys because I, <laughs> am going to be making fufu with oxtails for the first time so if you're new to this channel and you have not yet subscribed go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see me make some fufu and oxtail soup <laughs> or no is it going to be soup or stew i don't even know child see what i'm saying let's just hope it tastes good so i thank you for taking the time to watch my video i greatly appreciate it and like always, live your joy, travel safely, and I will see you on the next video. Shalom. One more thing that I forgot to add is, I know I smile a lot and stuff, you know, me laugh a lot and all that stuff. I feel like my lips is dry. I know I do, okay, but at the same day and time, like when I'm out and about, I speak a very, I'm, I'm assertive, okay? And I'm loud. <laughs> you haven't noticed. And I'm loud. And I'm very assertive when I speak. I speak with confidence to people. You know, I'm not, oh, you know, I'm, oh no, I live in St. Louis, okay? You act like that in Missouri, in St. Louis, they gonna eat you up alive and spit you out. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like, last night when I got off work, I went to uh, Fish and Chicken and I got some food. And <laughs> the guy came out with his food, looking at me up and down like, mmm something what did he say he said oh i sure can have dessert looking at me and i looked at him i said honey i'm not edible <laughs> i'm poisonous you don't want to eat this <laughs> i'm stupid y'all he looked at me like he didn't even know what the hell to say y'all he didn't even know what to say probably ain't never heard no woman say that to him. i'm not edible honey i'm poisonous <laughs> Anyways, I'm very assertive. I carry myself very assertive. I'm not aggressive, but I'm very assertive and very confident when I speak to people out in public. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to add that little part.